get it up there here. <clears throat> Okay, sorry. Um, let me go ahead and get started. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm sorry for um, uh, just putting this up at the last minute. Um, um, so, uh, probably the big thing today is to 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 make sure people uh, know some information about the midterm exam here. So I've been. Working on it a little bit. I don't have all the questions made up yet, but for various reasons, I decided that I really want everybody taking the exam at the same time. So it's going to be open basically uh, for our class period um, uh, for our next meeting. So basically from 1230 to 135 next Thursday. Uh, so it'll be an hour, 15 minute test. I, I heard you guys read this a little bit here. Um, so, uh, and, but, it, but it's not going to be in class. Uh, you do need to have your Python, Jupyter uh, environment set up. Everybody needs to have their own, be able to use that. Uh, also, as a warning, that the, um, uh, I'm going to try to make, there'll be three or four questions. The best thing to do is probably to review the, the program assignments that we've done so far. So it'll be uh, basic versions of some of the stuff that you should have done and know how to do from uh, what we did in our uh, uh, first three assignments here. Uh, there will probably be, you know, I'm going to be checking that people aren't working together. So it is an individual test. Um, there'll probably be different versions of questions and things like that, right? So I really want to try and get, uh, you know, everybody's own work uh, doing it by themselves on these things. So on the one hand, you know, it is time. So I'm going to try and make them simple. Uh, so I just want basic uh, skill to be able to demonstrate basic skills. Um, um, but, um, but yeah, you do need to have your a Python notebook set up and running, be able to, to, to do that during the time period. Uh, and you will have to, you know, uh, be working on the things. You won't have to be in class 
Um, I will maybe try and post like a, a Zoom um, and I'll, also I'll check email. So if anybody wants to ask questions while you're doing it, while everybody's doing it, um, I can maybe give a little bit of feedback in that uh, manner. I'm debating, I don't know if it'd be useful for me to be here or not in case anybody likes to work with their laptop, uh, but wants to possibly be able to uh, ask things directly. I could maybe do that. I'm not certain if that'd be useful or not. Um, all right. So, um, yeah, I did my, I had, I had some incorrect information up there a little bit, so I do need to get that word out, make sure people kind of know what's happening, but, but yeah, I decided I landed on that. I decided I really wanted to try to get everybody to be doing it at the same time uh, on Thursday, doing our normal class period. So Anybody, let me know if, if uh, we can talk more about that, um, um, review stuff if people want to ask about good things to look at. So my plan for today was, um, yeah, I want to discuss assignment three a little bit. So, I mean, you could very well get another polynomial regression. So I might throw some data at you and just ask you to uh, fit a polynomial to it. So redo some of the, the stuff that you did for assignment three. So, um, so there's a couple of points that I think might be useful for people to uh, understand for the ones. I haven't really completely finished assignment three. And the, the, you know, you guys don't want to hear my problems, but it did take me like a, a two full working days to get where I'm at. And I still got a few more that I need to look over uh, again. So, but, but like I was saying, I really did want to get those out here. So you can also look over those as you're thinking about for Thursday here. So, um, um, But yeah, um, so we can come back to the test, uh, but let me know if, if you want me to clarify anything on that. Let's um, look at the assignment three. Um, um, as I was putting in my, uh, um, as I was putting in the announcement, there's kind of some things I want to add onto this, but, um, but I, I didn't get time to do that either. Uh, but uh, we'll go over, so there is, the solution is posted over, up there right now if you want to, uh, uh, look at it um, as an attachment. So, you know, if you haven't been using those, you just have to download the, the IPython notebook and put it somewhere so you can open it up in your Jupyter uh, hub or whatever you're using to look at notebooks and run them. Um, there is a description. Um, so for this assignment, uh, we were actually using a degree five polynomial to generate the data. Uh, and those were the parameters that we were using. So uh, 1.5, 0, um, so on, plus noise, right? So um, if you're interested in that, maybe more than, as a hint for you guys that are here, I have sometimes asked people to, to uh, for the midterm test, to give me a function that generates data similar to this. So it's a good thing to understand. Um, um, these are relatively simple, but, you know, given you know, real quickly, we, we create some random values to represent the feature, the X, um, um, and these range from negative one to one. So the ran in, I don't remember if I've given examples of these before, maybe I have, but um, the ran in, the ran gives uh, random numbers between zero and one, multiplied by two, changes it from zero to two, and subtracting one shifts it so that we get uh, values from negative one to one. Um, and in this case, you know, uh, uh, we generate some whatever's asked for. So M is a parameter, but also notice that we pass in theta. So this function can actually be used to generate different kinds of polynomials just by passing in different theta parameters. So, so like when we use it here to generate your secret data that you were using for the test, we passed in that theta. Right? So that, that corresponds to that expression there, this degree five polynomial with six theta parameters. So the, you know, the, the x to the zero, x to the one, up to x to the five power. But anyway, so given those x's, we can we can calculate the uh, the y's by doing a simple matrix multiplication. Those would be the target values, but those would be values without any noise. So to make the problem more realistic, uh, we add in some some noise with a normal uh, random uh, distribution. So in this case, uh, it'll have a, a plus or minus 0 0.05 um, normally distributed that we're adding into it, right? So we generate 
also in noisy points and just add that in with the Y. And that was what you were given for the um, uh, for this assignment here. Um, so, um, yeah, I encourage you to look at this. Uh, one thing, I, I haven't added these down here, but um, um, a useful thing, uh, if you go back and you're reviewing this assignment, would be to look at your fit for like the, the four parts, uh, part two, three, four, and five, um, and plot the true function and your function. So uh, I, I kind of wanted to add that to this example. In fact, I, I was I, I forgot to ask you guys to do that for the assignment. Some people did do that, gave me something similar to this. So given when you fit like your underfit model, it's useful to plot the model, the resulting model against the raw data. Um, and it can be doubly useful then at the end here, um, if, if you're given the actual you know uh, parameters for the true function to compare the fit that you got from a grid search or whatever you did um, to the, the true function. Um, you, you, you can gain some insights into how well or bad you did on, on fitting things um, if you compare it. But anyway, so for this one though, um, there was, you know, this was our true function and, and you should have had the noisy data. So getting to what you guys had to do, I still have people not um, loading the data correctly. So. Uh, you know, that applies to anybody, make certain that you are reading using a relative directory. I mean, at some point I might just give a zero for that since I've mentioned it so many times instead of correcting it. Um, but uh, but yeah, also I really wanted for this first part was that you loaded it correctly. Um, um, maybe uh, use describe, but also plot it. So you should have gotten exactly the same plot if you plotted it correctly. Uh, for the noisy data here for this uh, uh, semester's um, um, secret function. Um, okay, so one thing I think a lot of people for, um, I know I talked about it, but I tried really briefly, so you know I, I can see it would be easy, but um, a lot of people weren't uh, setting the include bias when you did the polynomial features, at least not, uh, not for the underfit or the overfit model. So what happens if you, uh, the, the default for polynomial features is to include a bias term. So it adds in a column of ones, but I don't know why it does that by default because the default for linear regression though is to assume that there is no bias term and it, it adds it in for you. So if you, have polynomial features add it, uh, but then you don't specify to not fit a bias term there, you'll, you'll have um, uh, an extra feature. And in this case, it didn't really cause a problem. So the only way, that, but, but you know, the reason why I decided it, it was valid to take off a point here is if you understood what you were doing, you should have known that you should have been expecting that if I'm fitting a square, I should have three parameters, an intercept parameter, my x to the power of one, and my x to the power of two coefficient or theta value, right? So um, if you didn't do this, you know, so the default is true. So, um, So what you got for the underfit um, is um, that there's extra parameters here and yet yeah, it ends up being zero in this case. That can cause a problem, but the, with this underfit, it doesn't. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, if, if, if you're um, including that bias term. So what happens here when you include the bias term is, so originally I've only got one feature. Uh, so without the bias term, I just end up with, with an array with two columns or two features, the x to the power one, the x to the power two. So if you if you do if you include the bias, what you'll see is um, um, I'm, I'd have to run it, but um, um, uh, I don't want to take the time to do that. You should maybe write yourself, but you'll get you get a third column of all ones, basically. So it'll add in like you like we had to do for the previous assignment, where we added in um, so a dummy feature, a dummy column of the bias terms of all ones. And then when you have that, uh, in this case, yeah, it uh, ends up not really affecting anything. So you end up getting the same two parameters here, and that ends up being zero for that 
that bias or dummy term. But you don't really want that in this case here. Uh, or, I mean, if, if you do have that, I mean, you can also do a similar parameter. It might even be the same name. You can say to include the bias. I can't remember. Uh, for most of these regression models. So you can do either or, but, but you shouldn't have it in both places. Adding in, in, adding in a dummy term, but then also having it assume that it needs to add it in um, when you fit the model. Uh, and again, if, if you're not kind of following that, uh, what I, I at least wanted people to understand or, or uh, suspect was an issue is when you got to here, you should have known that I was you were expecting two parameters in an intercept um, and getting an extra one should have been um, weird to you at least. Should have been something that you noticed if you, you know, followed everything that we've been doing in this class. So. Um, all right, so anyway, that was, in this case, um, like I said, I would, I, I just ran out of time. I would like to have, have plotted um, giving an example of plotting this fitted model. So, you know, a nice thing to do at this point would be to, to plot uh, the model that you get. Let me change this back here before I continue on. So, you know, uh, here, you guys, when you're doing assignment, could have plotted the, the fitted model that you had with the raw data just to get a feel for how it looked, right? And that's useful to do. It's always useful to visualize what you're doing. Uh, you'll get insights that you wouldn't get otherwise just looking at numbers, right? Um, I also, you know, complain for a lot of people on limiting, not limiting the axes. And again, maybe you might think this is this is a small thing. Um, so I think the default works for this first one usually. Um, but um, let's say, well, I'll come back to that. So um, um, I'll talk some more about these learning curves here, right? So you should have gotten something. You actually, again, you know, you should have gotten exactly this learning curve if you set the seed. And if you fit the model, uh, even if you have the bias wrong, uh, it ends up being equivalent. You just get a zero uh, term with a, a zero theta parameter. So you should have gotten exactly the same learning curve here, right? So the 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 thing I, I don't think, you know, from the evidence that I got, some people still don't really understand what we're doing with these learning curves here, right? So these are a tool. To determine whether we're underfitting, overfitting, or, or have a good fit on a model, right? So there's lots of things you look for, but for one is, you know, we're asking, does it seem like the validation, and the training are converging or not? And it can be, it can be a judgment call. You know, it, it it can be tough to say definitively whether that's true or not. But here in general, uh, it, it is diverging, uh, converging. So, so you're getting pretty similar training and validation results after the data set size is above 10 or 20 points that we use. When it's converging, it either means it's a good model or you will get convergence if the model is underfitting, right? So you don't, you don't know the answer to that, whether it's good or underfit, but you do know um, that um, um, uh, the value that it's converging to uh, tells you something. So our fitness value the, the root mean squared error here um, um, is a target. So we know we should be able to do at least that well, if not better. So if, if we can get a better fitting model, we ought to be able to improve on our, um, um, on our cost uh, that we can achieve on, on the validation data, especially. Right. Um, all right, so we'll come back to that. Uh, so there's one thing I wanna show on that. Um, but but that's what you should have gotten here for the underfit model. Oh, and by the way, yeah, I mean, for this one, you should have gotten exactly these values. Um, some people were giving me MSE instead of RMSE. I think I took a, a point for that, um, mainly because, um, you know, I, I wanted people to compare apples to apples. So, you know, if we're plotting RMSE, um, it's easier to compare things if you're 
calculating the RMSE, like here, and if you're calculating the RMSE when you do your grid search, right? So you always want those to be the same. So, um, so I did want people to uh, correctly do that. Although I think most people were using this function correctly. So, like I've said, a common error I've had in the past is switching those around. So putting predictions first and labels second, which will give you the wrong results. I don't think I caught anybody doing that uh, this time. There's various ways to to calculate the um, the the root mean squared error, um, and also to calculate the the score, the the R squared score. So, uh, in this case, though, you know you should have gotten you know based exactly these results with the unfit one. So you should have gotten 0.7 on the R squared and uh, the, our cost function, um, root mean squared error cost function of a 0.1. Keep that in mind. So I wanted to that you know um, I didn't give a lot of people full points for the discussion because I thought a lot of people could have given me more um, uh, when talking about these things. Right. So um, all right. Here your results could have differed slightly, and again, if you weren't uh, uh, removing the bias term, um, um, I didn't. I only like I said I only took off once for that. Um, but uh, you, you would still get pretty much the same result. Uh, but uh, actually, in this case, it does cause a difference. So uh, if you do it the way that's correct, um, you should have pretty much gotten the results that you would get here in the example solution. So you get an intercept of like 1.4, and these numbers look um, relatively small. So all these numbers um, are, 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 are actually relatively small, there's something to the five, to, to the power of five here. So that's kind of big. Um, yeah, well, okay, well, yeah, I guess I take that back. Yeah, so the, 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 the parameters for the small theta values were constrained, although, yeah, they kind of blew up uh, for the large ones, but that's kind of what you expect for an overfit model. Right? Um, because it's, it's basically, especially on the ends, Again, I would really like to plot this out and, and show you, but um, uh, if this model is overfitting, you'll get a lot of wiggle, especially on the ends of things, if you were to go ahead and visualize this. But um, yeah, if, if you have if you have that bias term, if you don't, um, if you keep that in there, um, you still get the same kind of R squared and stuff, but uh, you get much bigger values for the theta there, uh, which, you know, um, may or may not be problematic. It, it ends up not really being problematic in terms of what you get for the fit, uh, but I, I think it actually, for some reason, ends up overfitting even more. So you end up getting a, a slightly lower RMSE than you would get. Um, anyway. What you should have gotten, um, um, I mean, another thing I was definitely looking for that you had 100 coefficients here, right? So uh, some people were definitely a bit long, it wasn't too many people, but uh, some people were doing things that weren't um, um, creating a polynomial with 100 features, 100 degree polynomial here that was being fit. It's easy to see that if, if you display the coefficients and you don't seem to have 100 there. Um, but you should have gotten an R squared of much higher than what you got for the uh, underfit model, 0.95, um, and an RMSE of close to 0.4. So yeah, the, without the bias, or including the bias terms, it actually ends up being a little bit below 0.4. Um, with them, you get a little bit above, but around 0 0.04 um, here. Um, and there's nothing. So I know some people probably think that this is just um, you know, kind of a picky thing, but again, the reason why I don't think it's picky is because I think this is evidence that you really don't understand the purpose of learning curves, right? So if you don't limit the y-axis, um, it, it really makes this visualization kind of useless for you to determine whether this is overfit or underfit, whether it's converging or not. Because right? I mean, you know, without realizing that, that the y axis is 
the power of 11 here, so the cost has really exploded, but it comes back. So, right, I mean, you know, is that converging or not? Um, and, and also, you know, I can't read, I can't really read what the, the cost is for, uh, I mean, especially for the training value. I mean, it's all zero, it's all squashed down there. I can't really see whether or what value. Right. So, um, So for this visualization, I mean, you really need to know kind of where, in fact, two might be too large because I still can't really tell uh, where, where my training is kind of ending up here, although I can see that it's, it's you know, it's above zero, right? So, um, Uh, but here, you know, so this helps. Uh, for one, it's very clear that it never really converges. So even on the um, on the figure where I don't constrain y limit, it does look like cost comes back down. But even for the data set size of 80, I mean, it's still really, really big compared to the, the cost we're getting for the, uh, the data that we train with, right? So it never really converges um, if you were overfitting the model the way you should have incurred in this one. And it's pretty obvious if you constrain the y-axis that that's happening. Not to mention that I can also get a better feel. So it also, we can see this, this is one of the things, reasons why overfitting a model is useful because it does give, the, give us some information, give us uh, some idea of if, if I do believe the model is overfitting uh, and there's pretty good evidence that it is because we're not converging the, the training and the test uh, on our learning curves here. Um, so since it's not converging, uh, our performance um, on the data we train with, though, so for the overfit model, um, is something that I might be able to get a good fit model to get close to that. Right? So that performance there uh, for my cost function, the root, root mean squared error, um, I should get a, a model that converges, but the validation is also getting somewhere around that 0 0.05, right? So that, that that's kind of the whole purpose of one of the purposes of these learning curves is doing something like that is, is I want to try and find a model that's not overfitting, that's actually converging, but is getting RMSs down to a similar cost. Really what we're getting is about 0 0.04 um, on our training data as we're measuring it here. Right? And again, I encourage you, you know, if, uh, to think more about these uh, learning curves. So it's kind of some important concepts on there. Um, you know, so for example, why is the root mean squared error 0 0.04, but you know, we're seeing it really high here on the validation. So again, understand what, what we're doing on these, these training curves here. So uh, here we calculated it. If you did it the way I asked for, we calculated the R squared and the RMSE on all the data. So we actually fit the model on all the data. Uh, and we calculated on all the data. So this is really a score uh, from an overfit model. Um, whereas, you know, what we've done here is we've trained models on subsets of the data. And again, though, um, uh, we calculate the RMSE on the data that we trained it with. So you know, for an overfit model, that's getting similar RMSE. So that, that's the, the, the overfit cost that we get on calculating the cost on the data that we trained the model with. But we get much different results on the data that, that we didn't train it with. So it didn't see that data, wasn't, wasn't able to overfit on those points. So the, the cost function explodes. Uh, it's nowhere near being correct on those, right? on, on, on our validation, what we call the validation data here. Um, all right. We'll be using, I think, uh, you know, learning curves um, lots or in other contexts in this class, but they are a basic tool of machine learning. So you'll run across them um, in lots of other contexts. Um, yeah, let's, let's move on. So, I did, I mean, the, the one thing that I really wanted, you only, really only need to, to show me one example of regularization for the, the parts four and five, but I did need 
you define some value of alpha that was a good fit. Okay, so I still had some people, lots of people did do multiple of these, which is fine. Um, but um, some, several people um, that picked a value of alpha that was still obviously underfitting. Right? They weren't giving a good value for one or both of these, the lasso of the ridge. And, and you know, the, the again, this assignment is trying to illustrate or get you to, to, to understand how it is you can determine whether a value is good or not. So it, it, a good value of alpha regularization is if, if we're using the model that overfits, you know, like the degree 100, like we did before, but if we have the right amount of regularization, um, we should see convergence, um, you know, so we should see validation not exploding. Um, and we should see, if we can get a good model, we should see that we get the RMSE, the, our, our cost function score, um, and also the R squared, both of them, similar to what we saw for our overfit model, but um, um, on the validation. So especially performance on the validation um, uh, in the learning curves, if it's getting near that 0 0.05, that means that with our overfit model that we're getting into good ranges of alpha, right? So, um, you know, so it, so it really needed to be relatively small. So some people were, were giving me like 0.1 or 0 0.01. If you did that, you probably got some points taken off because if that was the only thing you showed me, um, you're obviously like, like 0 0.01 is still something Remember, we have 0.7 um, for the R squared, and we had 0.1. So, I mean, did a little bit of something, right? So, so the RMSE is better than um, our underfit model, which was 0.1, but it's still, it's, it's closer to 0.1 than it is to the 0 0.04 or 0 0.05, right? So, so this is really still um, underfitting. And, you know, if you did the learning curve and if you understand what these are, are doing, Okay, so right here's where, uh, how do you uh, interpret this, right? So is that converging or not? I mean, is the, 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 the problem is, is that, you know, we, we've settled um, on our validation data at that level of 0 0.1 here, which we think we can do better from our evidence from the previous where we overfit the model, right? So, so we really should be able to get that down closer to the 0 0.05 for both of these for a good fit model. So really this is still, um, this is still underfitting. And I expected people to, to realize that uh, if, if you got points off for this, because you know you should have looked at the RMSE and said, well, can't I do something that will get it closer to what we got for the, the overfit model. Um, yeah, and for lasso, I mean, you really needed to value um, at least like 0 0.01, 0 0 0 0.001, one, one, one thousand for alpha, relatively small in this case, right? Um, so in that case, I probably didn't complain if you were at least that in that range. Although you could go too far the other way, right? Um, so here, um, given that, you know, we had a RMSE of 0 0.05, right? And you know, again, I consider that better than what I showed before because we are now finally closing the gap on the validation, but even more so where we are ending up at is down here closer to the 0 0.05 rather than at the 0 0.1 where we had for the underfit model, right? So, so that definitely looks better there. Um, and again, you know, you maybe need to limit your axes in order to read these things right. So if you don't do a limit there, I guess you might be okay on this one. Again, it depends on how bad the, uh, the, uh, uh, RMSE gets for the validation, whether it's going to squash things to make it unreadable or not. Um,
Um, oh, I, I probably mentioned this uh, on the grid. Um, um, it, it is a good idea to uh, maybe change your iterations or the tolerance. Um, you know, so you maybe can't completely eliminate this. So these are mostly coming for very small values of training set. It's impossible for it to converge when you only, when you only train it with like one or two data points. Uh, but if you're getting lots of those, that means it's not converging even for larger train set sizes. And it may or may not be a problem, but if you can, you do want to pay attention to those and, and try and um, eliminate or, or minimize convergence warnings, convergence issues when you're fitting a model like this. Um, I guess as a last thing, you know, another thing that um, was meant to be illustrated on this question was if you are fitting the model well, this ought to have given you a ballpark idea because the um, the um, um, the, uh, the the lasso tend because of how it works um, tends to drive parameters that aren't useful to zero. And the bridge doesn't really do that, but the lasso does. So uh, another function of doing lasso regularization, uh, the um, L1 norm, um, is if I want to uh, trim features, I can sometimes use this to figure out features. You know, if they get driven down to zero, close to zero, they're maybe not useful. So I can use those to remove features and then just train with the ones that, that seem to be useful. In the context of our polynomial regression, they can give you a rough estimate, possibly of the degree of the secret function polynomial. Right? So you can see that uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, only up to the eighth degree here for my current value of alpha. Right? So, um, so for good ranges, you should have seen something similar here. And that was another thing I was kind of looking for um, in your submitted work. Um, remember the truth, the, the true polynomial is degree five, um, but you would have usually gotten something where anything above degree nine or 10, yeah, good value of alpha would have, would have gotten driven to zero uh, on this problem here. Um, So I, I think, uh, I mean, this, uh, of course, um, this, this can be too small. I mean, if you make alpha zero, then you're doing no regularization. So you're back to just an overfit model, right? So uh, what did I do there? So, um, you know, point one, one ten thousandth is still fine, but um, um, but uh, oh, yeah, and again, right, if, if you get if you go too far. You maybe can't really detect it from the you know your RMSE because because remember that's this is about the same as what we were doing for the overfit model, but you'll start seeing um, divergence, bad divergence again if you look at the learning curves in this case. So here, yeah, so maybe I need to play around with the the iterations or the tolerance again. So we're getting a lot of these. Um, by the way, I mean, I don't know if people are aware of this. So in Jupyter Hub, you can um, actually turn on and off the scroll thing there. So it's useful if you're getting a bunch of stuff coming out for you. So, but uh, here, I mean, so, you know, I mean, they do finally come together, but there is a part here where they're definitely really gappy there. So, so yeah, but, but yeah, that, this is overfitting a bit here. Um, all right, so similar, similar comments for the Ridge, although Ridge, um, higher a little bit higher values of alpha, I think were better. Um, so, so even at like 0 0.01, you're probably fine uh, in terms of having something that looks like it's not overfitting, it's doing a fairly well fit. 
function there. So, but again, you know, you should try to get something in the 0 0.04 range um, for your cost that uh, looks like it doesn't, you know, the validation doesn't uh, explode at any point and does finally converge with the test down around the 0.05. Um, anyway, so those are the things that I was looking for or looking for you guys to have done on this one. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, and you know, right. So for the uh, the ridge, you uh, wouldn't expect, you know, so you still have all the parameters, have some values on them, even though it's fitting pretty well now. Um, So um, for one thing, I mean, do learn to use the markdown cells. So I had two people, three people, uh, either giving me comments or doing something else in order to do discussion here. I mean, and you know, I did ask for discussion. That was worth like five points. So if you didn't give a discussion, you didn't get the five points on that. Um, these are these are you know uh, not central to this class, but you know this is a little bit about um, you know doing research. Um, so how do you uh, write up a discussion, a technical discussion on things, right? So uh, another thing, uh, again, it's a little bit nitpicky, but um, so it was great. Some people did give me multiple models, but if you do, in this case, it makes more sense. Like if I tried values of, uh, of different alphas for lasso, Um, what you're, you know, what you're trying to do is you're trying to discover what happens as alpha varies, uh, you know, as, as the regularization, the model regularization changes for the lasso, right? So some people, a lot of people uh, that had a lot of these kind of had them randomly, didn't, didn't order these, didn't sort these, right? And again, this is just being me being a little picky, but, you know, if you're doing this for a paper, or a technical report, I mean, it makes sense for these to be ordered because in your discussion, you know, in this table, you're trying to figure out what the effects on R squared and RMSE is. Um, just make up some values here. Um, as, you know, your regularization changes. So I showed some examples like a, 0 0.01 was a little bit too high, so it ended up being with an R squared of below 0.9. I don't remember. Um, and we had um, RMSE starting to increase again, approximately somewhere when we got a little bit too big. Something like that, right? So, so anyway, you know, learn your tools, right? So, you know, the, the markdown uh, and, and using that so you can do tables and other stuff. So that was supposed to be an opportunity for you to, to recognize that and maybe try it out uh, if you've never uh, used the markdown before. Uh, definitely, you know, so I might have a discussion on the test. I might ask you to describe or discuss something. So, you know, if you do, you should be using markdown to write up technical dis discussions, you shouldn't be doing comments um, or some other method. Um, but, uh, oh yeah, and, yeah, back to this, right? So it does make sense. So if, if the purpose, the purpose of the, this discussion was uh, to make observations about um, the, the four different ones at a minimum and uh, to correctly report the R squared and RMSE that you got. Uh, and then to make some conclusions about you know, um, uh, the difference of your underfit and overfit model with different, uh, with, with like a, a good value of regularization for a lasso ridge regression. So I only gave one or two fives on that for, for well done things, mostly fours and threes on the discussion part. Uh, I should have given like a five or a four uh, if you had at least four things on the table. Um, maybe less if, if uh, you had wrong values in here. I, I didn't take anything off if you mix, if you didn't really have these sorted. 
just just complained about it. Um, and um, what else? I mean, you know, if you didn't do any extra ones, uh, I was at least hoping or expecting you know, to talk about um, this was the value that I came up with. I think that it's a well-fit model for the lasso because, you know, I got a similar um, RMSE as what I got for the overfit, but the learning curve showed me that it wasn't overfitting something like that, uh, that the lasso ridge. Also a good you know, discussion might have discussed, even if you didn't show me uh, that uh, this value of alpha was definitely too big. Um, so um, it was still underfitting at that point. So, so I know it had to be lower than that when I tried it out. Things like that were, were good indicators to me that you were thinking about what you were doing there um, and trying to describe it. Um, Okay, and then finally, I guess one final thing I did, I did kind of um, complain about this for some people as well. So, you know, if, if you're doing that by hand, trying to um, tune a parameter like alpha to figure out a good, so a good amount of regularization to get a good fitting model. Uh, I mean, you can, you can try different values at random by hand, you know, but um, at some point um, you, I want to get more systematic. So you want to more uh, thoroughly explore what happens over some range. And that's, that's really what the grid, um, the grid search will give you. Uh, in It's a very powerful uh, kind of um, uh, thing. Uh, not to mention that also by default, uh, it is, well, uh, you can do, use it. So it'll evaluate things using cross-validation. So you're actually evaluating things um, um, on, on data. I read that. Um, on, on data that you're correctly um, you know, splitting up so that you're, back, you're uh, figuring out how it's performing on data it wasn't trained with. Right? So that's one of the essences of cross-validation. Um, but uh, anyway, the, so the point is, is that really, you know, you shouldn't just be doing five, 10 values or the same five or 10 that you tried by hand, right? You, you really want to explore like a large range of ones, right? So in this example here, we're actually going to do a thousand values that are spaced uh, logarithmically from 10 to the negative 15 to zero. This is the example that I had in the textbook, right? Um, another, you know, Common thing about this, I didn't ask for it, but um, um, I think most people were correctly figuring out how to get the best model. Some people weren't um, pulling out the, uh, the the cost function quite right. So you know, for reasons we, we talked a little bit about in class, I mean, uh, you can't just directly use the root mean squared error. So you do have to use the negative mean square error, but if you do that, if you, if you want to compare it back to RMSE results that you had previously, uh, you will have to take the um, the best score or the, the score that that grid search gives you and convert it into RMSE. So by taking the negative and the square root, we'll get it back to each one, back into the format that you need. Um, But you know, kind of the point here is, you know, instead of trying things at random, you can get a much better feel if you exhaustively search your parameter state. So I get something like this. Some people I haven't, I haven't figured out yet. Some people were getting where costs went way up here, and I wasn't certain if they were doing something wrong or not on that. So I haven't had a chance to go back and look at that. So um, um, yeah, if you evaluate it for an overfit model, the RMSE should have still stayed down. So these models are probably overfit, uh, but um, they are um, just um, still getting similar RMSE. So it ends up around 0.06 or so. But in that range from like 10 to negative 15 to 10 to the zero, uh, there is a little place where you get a bit of a, you know, a, a minimum, uh, an optimal location for the, uh, the alpha, right? So here we're plotting 
the different values of alpha for regularization with the, uh, the, the cost that was achieved at each one of those regularizations using cross-validation, right? Um, here's a little bit tough to see, but, um, you know, so, so again, you know, uh, visualizing correctly is a good skill to learn or to appreciate, right? So we really, we're really interested in that place where the minimum is happening here. So where we're getting the best RMSE value for alpha. So it's happening somewhere right, right here below 10, to, somewhere between 10 mega four, 10 mega five. Um, anyway, that, that's what I get for the thing I asked you for, which was, right, to try this out for the lasso, um, uh, different values of regularization. So I thought it was a missed opportunity if you just did kind of the, the same five, 10 points that you did before, right, or only showed like, like five or 10 points here, right? So you usually want to do something a little bit more exhaustive. Um, Oh, I guess I did have some of this down here at the, at the end. So if you do run this uh, notebook the way I have it right now, like for the, the best alpha uh, that I had for those 1,000 points that were tried, it ended up being at that. So for the lasso with that alpha for organization, you get um, um, that model, which can compare to the true function. If you know what it is, looks something like that, right? So notice, I mean, you know, it's still not bad, but, um, but it sort of could be better. Right? Uh, it's, so getting some things in here. Uh, so yeah, the, the point of that visualization is it, it, I didn't really ask you to do anything. I just checked that it was actually working. But um, since this was a polynomial regression, probably the best model you can get would be where you exactly get the right power for your model. And power in this case is going to be having the right number of polynomial terms. So, um, yeah. So knowing that, that we were using a polynomial to generate the, the, the noisy data, probably the best I would ever be able to do, if I know that's the case, is to uh, do like a grid search. So here we're doing a grid search over all models with degree two up to 100. Right? So you were using degree two and degree 100 a lot, but now we're trying everything in between uh, in this case. right? again, using grid search with cross-validation. So the best we come up with um, ends up, you know, notice that we, we still get similar uh, root mean squared error cost uh, around 0 0.05 here. But uh, we end up with a degree five polynomial, which is correct in this case, which is often the case to do it like this. Although you know, if I would give you more noise, it makes it harder um, and it might not be able to, to, to get exactly the right degree, right? Um, but, but yeah, here, you know, notice, you know, uh, overfitting, but with regularization is definitely not, is definitely inferior to getting precisely the right model we're, we're getting right into. And, you know, I'll leave it up as an exercise, but you could probably even get a little bit better if we, if we do a grid search both on uh, the degree and on regularization on like a lasso model simultaneously, right? So, so we could probably even get a, a few percentage points, a few a tenth of a percentage point um, uh, increase um, in performance um, if, we, if we tried doing some regularization simultaneously here. Okay. Um, So yeah, so that was everything I had on the third assignment. You'd be have one last question about um, that stuff in there. Okay. Um, so yeah, you're likely to see some of this same stuff uh, on Thursday. So definitely review that, especially if you had some points taken off or some problems. Um, our work our work quite getting some of the points, you know, some of the purposes of, of the things I was discussing here today, like on the learning curves, stuff like that. Um, so maybe review this. Um, so I mean, I know some people came in after I talked about. It. Does anybody want to 
Um, I, I'll, I'll just uh, go over the main things again. Uh, you know, I want to get the word out, uh, but I did decide to do um, a, a test uh, where we're all doing it together. So it is going to be time. It's not going to be. It's not going to be face to face. Uh, so you still can use your own system uh, in your own environment. Uh, but I do expect everybody to do it individually. Uh, so we're going to hold it uh, from the twelve thirty to one forty-five time slot. Uh, but you don't have to be here. But make certain before Thursday that you've got your system set up that you're run, able to run notebooks that work well. You know that they're you know, ideally using the same uh, libraries and same environments that we use for the um, uh, assignments for the class that, that I'm grading with. I'll be grading the test with that same uh, environment. So, um, so, so yeah, I mean, if you still don't have a good environment, you really need to, to get that uh, worked out at this point. Um, and uh, since it's timed, I'm, I'm going to try to give you basic stuff. So uh, it will be timed. It will be through my view online. So you will have to start a quiz if you have about 15 minutes on it. Probably will be like two, three, or four questions. Um, uh, but uh, I'm going to be expecting you, though, to upload a worked out IPython notebook. So it's not going to be multiple choice or true false or anything like that. Um, so make certain that you do have your environment running before you start the test um, and a blank notebook. Uh, in fact, maybe uh, I'll, I'll post something with the includes, although you know the includes um, you can have a blank notebook that basically has like the these includes for assignment three, maybe with a, a few others in case I throw in like a regularization or something. But uh, that's basically what you'll need to start with. Um, I'll, I'll try and post something, post that on Wednesday and have a link to that so that you can download it before the. Uh, before we start the test on Thursday. Uh, oh, and likewise, I, I don't, I haven't completed the, the questions I want to give, but uh, I might also give like a data file. So there, so I'll, I'll try and give like a blank IPython notebook with the includes that you should need, the imports that you should need, um, and maybe a data file or two uh, that you might use. But my recommendation, you know, uh, would be to start with go back and look at your assignments. So, um, um, or the yeah, or the even the solutions that I uh, gave out for these. So, for example, um, I mean, I might give a question that's more uh, like the first question might be a little bit more focused on basic NumPy or something like that. Right, so you know, again, I, I wouldn't give you, you know, um, like 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 part three from our first assignment. So creating this function, um, but um, uh, I might do something where you have to do some numpy or something like that, um, uh, shape some arrays and do some uh, fancy indexing. Um, you know, just demonstrate you can do that again, maybe. Um, But um, let's see. Definitely make certain that you can do, you know, uh, a linear and a logistic regression uh, using either scikit-learn or class model, right? So um, probably there will be at least one question like that. So thinking about that, um, I might have to give you a data set and then say, you know, give me a, a logistic regression. Um, and uh, then give me the uh, confusion matrix, uh, the resulting logistic regression. It'll be it'll be things like that probably. Um, although, yeah, or, or another thing is I might ask you to do it, but on like a, a data set from from scikit learn. So I might. Um, so in in the test, I might give you so the the I'll give you the question in my Leo online. I might also give you some code that you might have to copy and paste over into like your notebook. Like uh, so, like thinking about doing like a logistic or or uh, linear regression. Um, 
Um, I might give you just a file that you'd have to load using pandas, or uh, instead I might say generate the data set using make blobs and give you give you the line that generates like a, a data set using a scikit. There, there's different functions that generate made up data sets from scikit-learn. So I might I might use that um, instead, right? So either way, um, uh, just make certain that yeah that that uh, you can do some of these basics. Um, um, take a data set, uh, create an instance of like a linear regression or a logistic regression, fit the data to it, um, and then answer some questions like uh, what was its R squared score, what was its RMSE square, RMSE costs for. Um, those are kind of what I think of as basic things. And uh, I don't know, I, I'm, I, might, I might ask you to do it with stats model as well. So make sure you can do it with the, the stats model, a linear regression or logistic regression um, on stats model. Um, I could maybe, you know, give, um, um, so, Doing some things this would be kind of like maybe doing some things with NumPy or stuff, but using Scikit-Learn to do some data cleaning. But uh, the basics on those would be yeah, using an imputer to impute some missing data, or um, using an encoder to encode um, a, a categorical variable that you had to do for this assignment. Not certain if I'll give you those, but maybe so you might want to you know review those, take a look at those. Um, you probably will have to plot some stuff, although, you know, um, I don't know if I'll make you like try and generate like a decision boundary or, or something, but, you know, expect at least one place where I ask you to plot a basic plot of like some raw data, uh, maybe or some, something like that. Um, And uh, yeah, and then, you know, right. Um, there also might be, uh, I mean, I, like I said, I'm still working on some of the questions, uh, but um, but uh, probably a logistic regression and there'll probably be a, um, a linear regression in there too. Uh, so one of each uh, in some form or another. And the linear regression might just be some kind of, some form of doing like a some polynomial feature. So fitting a polynomial to a set of data points using a uh, linear regression. Um, all right. So I don't know if I have any more advice. Does anybody have anything I need to clarify on like the test or anything? Or any questions about other stuff? To read? I mean, yeah, if you get through that, I mean, you know, suggest maybe going back and reading your textbook, so questions and you know, assignments and things mostly come from stuff out of our textbook. So it's another good source to review. All right, uh, yeah, so I don't have too much more um, that I think I need to go over. We're a little bit early. I can stick around if you need, if you want to ask something uh, in person. Uh, but uh, yeah, that'll be it for today. Um, Let's go ahead and adjourn. Um, and yeah, we're not going to officially meet on Thursday either. Um, uh, another thing, I'll, I'll probably post like a, a Zoom uh, yeah, and have a Zoom session going so that you can um, text me or something. But I'll, while, the, while the test is happening, um, I'll, I'll be monitoring email and maybe have that Zoom up so you can ask me stuff in real time if you have a question or anything. But yeah, I, I don't think it'd be useful for me to be in here uh, during the test. I'll probably be over in Science 55 um, when we're doing the test on Thursday. All right. That's it. See you guys, I guess, next week. Okay. Thank you.